the lab. lab started in 1983, Azriel Rosenfeld, who right. was creating the Center for Automation Research, and appreciated the interdisciplinary benefits. He was a visionary in that sense. So he had the vision lab, he created the robotics lab, and invited me to join and create this HCI lab. And I would say our first real strong success as a lab was the hypertext idea. That's right. We did many, many studies of many different systems, and we found if we made it too bright, it disrupted reading. The light blue that you see now in most web browsers came because we chose that. When you and I came, we clearly um, significantly broadened the scope of the lab, yeah. and as there were more participants and a wider range of projects, that one of the most important parts was to develop a structure for the lab for making it more collection of people working on a variety of subjects mm -hmm. rather than a small group of people working to directly together. In fact, that was my goal walking in, was to expand the disciplines, um, because I felt like HCI had, in, in the field, had expanded so much that I thought that it was time for the lab to expand. Well, now we have um, close to 30 faculty that are associated with the lab, and um, there's six colleges and two institutes in, involved in the lab, but it's, it's wonderful to see how people are getting together in, um, in different ways because of the space. One of the interesting things about this group is that every one of us really has had a bit of a, a vision on something that was important to us and spent a decade figuring out how to make it work and be effective and transmit that to the rest of the world. I think we've all been successful, but that's one of the strengths of HCIL. I mean, another thing that is important was the way the lab always worked with real companies and, you know, real users. You know, we always say that we work much better when the design and the new techniques are really tied to a practical application. An example is a lifeline and how it was started was the Department of Juvenile Justice. So I spent a long time trying to figure out how to make Zoom being interfaces uh, uh, useful and usable. Right. And if you look at the commercial applications of Zooming now compared to where it was 20 years ago, well, it's super interesting because what you find is that the technology and the ideas were all there at very, very early on. And what made it uh, broadly useful is to dramatically constrain um, the space, the interactions, the content, the applications. The interesting thing is when we started, and this was 10 years ago, when we started bringing kids to the lab as, as junior researchers and here twice a week, um, and then two weeks over the summer, it wasn't being done anywhere, um, anywhere else um, that I knew of. And um, it's still, there are very few places that are, um, are doing this on an ongoing basis, and it is a feature of our lab. Most important outcomes? Yes. Or students. Uh -huh. <laughs> really. I mean, this is the most important cool product that the lab really generates. And the real satisfaction is working with the students one on one. Right. You know, trying to shape a project, push it forward, see them mature, see them become researchers, gain self confidence, and, and go out and go do wonderful things beyond what they've done here. But I think the other thing, too, is that much of our work does have an impact on you know everyday people also whether it's through licensing things or through our partnerships <coughs> with companies um, and I think that's also the outcome of the lab is that we don't just keep it here is that we we work very hard to have people take it and and make it their own HCI research as pure research discipline is dramatically changing because it's the number of new widgets to make and test are fewer but it's more about figuring out how to work with people, how to work with networks, how to work with a wide range of devices and different kinds of devices within the same system, people's actual you know, workflows. All of these things together are the hard HCI problems. The work we've seen of the past might be characterized as HCI in the small, but where ambition expands to HCI in the large, the idea of online communities, of social networks, of of, of reliability, of the way it changes people's lives. We, in this community, think about, understand, and study through interdisciplinary methods the role of technology in people's lives and the shaping of the technology and its use in well, ways that are aligned with the values we hold dearly. The more we understand who we are as humans, the more we'll understand what tools we need. And I think that the, the genius of putting human before computer was something that um, that came from this lab. Uh, I, I mean, I think that it's going to continue to be even more human-centric, and that's the future.